Hi, today we're going to talk about a different type of bottle opener than we've discussed earlier, which if you recall was the waiter's bottle opener, this guy. And we also discussed the rabbit opener. Today we're going to talk about the butterfly opener. And since there's a little bit of a trend here in animal names, but oh well, maybe it's just me. All right, so there's a lot of different styles of this, but they all work pretty much the same. This is an example of one. And you'll notice it's got the little arm thingies on the side. We're going to talk about how that works. And you can also see here, you got the little the screw part, the cork that goes into the cork. And there's a very key difference here with this one versus some of the other ones. Now, I'm not talking about the outside stuff. That's just decoration. No big deal. The key things on this are the screw part and the little armed guys. And they go up and down. And to an extent, this, where you can twist it on your own. But that's the lesser matter. They all have that. Okay, so let's take a close-up look, and I want to point something out. All right, now, if you recall, this is the waiter's opener, and I want you to pay particular attention to the blade itself, or the screw itself, excuse me, the, this part. Now, if you notice, it's a coil. It's not an actual screw, um, and you'll see what I mean. I've got a different picture I'm going to throw up here in a little bit, just to give you an idea. When you are looking at a butterfly opener, if you're going to go buy one, which is up to you, I don't care that much for them, but they're not too bad. I want you to notice that the screw part of this one, ouch, is very sharp on the tip, number one. But this is very similar in shape and design to the waiter's opener. And the key thing there is that you have down the middle an actual shaft that the, is full of cork when it's screwed in. Now I'm going to tip it, this one up so you can hopefully see that and see how that's hollow all the way down to the bottom because it's a coil or a helix. Think of DNA, double helix. Well, this is a single helix and it's got that open core in the middle. Uh, there we go. Okay, now you can contrast that to another one that I had occasion to use a while back that doesn't have that. Now, see, this is the same type of thing. I don't know if I can, yeah, I'll show this way a little bit. It's kind of hard to see, but you see it's got that hole all the way down the middle. Now the other type that is like a screw is <clears throat> arrange this here. The other type, like a screw, is doesn't have that shaft in the middle. Now hopefully I can get that right next to it and you can see what I'm talking about. So anyway, let's take a look at how this is used. <clears throat> okay, first of all, like the rabbit there is no way to get the, the top part off the capsule, to cut the capsule. So there is another device, and this is called, what I call a capsule cutter. It's a real simple design. It's got two blades on the inside. You can kind of see them. They're a little bit different silver color. Now this one, other than the cutting blades, is plastic. It's just got a uh, chrome coloring on the outside. So what you do with that is just press it on tightly. And kind of see how it looks that way. This is looking, of course, from the top, and there's the side. So what you want to do is take this and squeeze it together here, and as you squeeze, you twist. And this will cut the capsule off nice and neat. Yeah, there we go. So now that's stuck in here, so this just pops right out. This happens to be a plastic one, so the capsule is plastic, that is. All right, now let's tip the camera back a little bit. Oh, it's, that should be better. Here, there we go. Okay, now what we're going to do, in fact, I'm going to go a little bit more on that. There we go. What we want to do is this screw tip here is going to go right in the cork, of course. So you just place this whole thing centered on top of the bottle my fingers out of the way. Now you have to, this is still not showing you that much. Let's go once more here. I'll go back some too. No, that doesn't help. All right, let's tip it all the way out here. Oops, sorry there. All right, so what we want to do is set this on top and you've got a little part around here that will catch on the lip of the bottle. And you want to make sure you kind of look through the holes in the side, make sure that point is centered on that screw, or on, excuse me, centered on the cork. Now you give it just a little bit of pressure to get it started. And once you get going, it should kind of pull itself in, so not too much effort. You just want to keep it so when you turn it, it doesn't hold on to everything. Now if you notice, as I turn this, 
those little arms will start to come up. And that's where your leverage is going to come into play here in a little bit. Now, you want to get all the way up. There we go. Alright, now this will not go in any further. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull that cork out by pushing these down. Tight cork, if you heard that. Okay, now, part of my problem with these is those screws do not go all the way. Sometimes you have to give it a little extra boost. And then again, squeeze that. There we go. Alright, so here's what we have. I'm going to pull these back out. This went in just a little crooked. And you can see that the cork's now solidly on there. Did, did not poke through. It's only about up to there, I believe. So I like the waiters ones because they are longer and they will go all the way through the screw. You just have to stop that quarter turn extra. Now, to get this off, you just basically take a hold of the cork and twist it. So, just unscrew it. Alright, now here's part of the problem I have with this. And even with this dial, it will happen. You get that cork is torn up a little bit. And that's not good. It went in kind of crooked and kind of pushed out the side a bit. So, this is not my favorite one, nor is the rabbit, for similar reasons. Or one last thing to do, and that of course is take a sip and see what we got. This, by the way, what am I drinking here? Uh, this is a French wine. It's uh, one I've not had before. It's uh, Cote de Catalogne, 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 something. It should be, I'm going to look it up for sure, but it should be um, near the Spanish border of France, down south. So we'll see what we got here. Mmm, very nice nose. This is a brand new one to me. I've never had it before, so I'm going to get a taste of it with me here. Okay, needs to breathe a bit, but I think otherwise it's not going to be a bad wine. Alright, so, just a couple things. If you've enjoyed learning about this and you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe. I'd also be interested in any comments that you have about this video or any others. You can leave them with this video or any other video you watch of mine. And I uh, always like to read those and see what people are thinking. And I'm also curious what you think about the little quotation marks I put on the end card. So if you can leave me any comments down below, I'd appreciate that. In the meantime, cheers. All right, so you want to get it down there. And you want to kind of push it into the very center of that cork. Just, you know, push it in enough where, oh, there we go. That went in pretty well. You can see it. I get just a tip in there. Now apply some downward pressure and just start turning. And you want to keep it as straight up and down as you can. So you're getting right through the middle of that cork. 